Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, this is a very informal uh, work session. So I'll run all of them. Uh, and right now, to get cranked up and going, I'm, uh, we're going to do some department updates. And Ms. Single runs the library for us for, uh, for the Sequoia Regional and for Pickens County. And if you would, please, I'm going to let you come to bat for us. How's that? Where I stand. Right there is fine. Right here is fine. Yeah. Of course, I'm, I'm the manager, I'm Emma Engel, and Anita Summers is the director, and she couldn't be here today. She's at a director's meeting in Athens, but she asked me to come by, and I'm going to do a little update on the renovations. Uh, as you know, we got the splash in 2014, and our money's coming to <clears throat> fruition here, and next year uh, we'll present to the state um, to get our state money. Um, there's a capital day, I think, in February. We'll probably go to and talk to them. And the state, we're, um, there's a, like a list of projects that the state and all the libraries are on it, and we're actually number three. So we have a good chance of maybe being approved. But you know, the politics and everything, you just never know. Um, so we're, what we're going to do is we're um, doing a fact sheet, which we're going to put out to the public about what the renovation is. And I've brought every, well, three copies. <clears throat> and back in 2015, the state had asked for a drawing of what we were supposed to do. They wanted to look at it. So I'm going to give this to you, even though this will probably change since it's 2015, but it'll give you an idea of what the architects were drawing and looking at. Um, so the first sheet, like I said, is a fact sheet, and on the back uh, is the parking lot. I don't think that's going to change as much um, with the renovations, but the parking lot is on the back. <laughs> and then this is the drawing that they have of the renovations. They're going to expand it. The building is 11,000 square feet, and we're wanting to expand it 8,000 8, to make it a 19,000 square foot building. Uh, it was built in 1996, so it's 23 years old. And of course, there's a lot of update with plumbing and electrical and um, security. So that, y'all can have that too. But, um, this is basically, we're going to put it out to the public of what it is, the fact sheet. Um, what we're hoping to expand and improve upon in the project. And it talks about the splash and the matching funds. And um, that's about it. Unless, I hope I can answer your questions. We've got a, um, as the other two commissioners are here, I think we approved for a new roof, was it last year? Yes, we have had a new roof. And the, uh, in the roof that's there, even though it's new, can be integrated into the, mm -hmm. uh, into the new addition on, so it's not going to be wasted, I guess, for lack of a better <coughs> word. Uh, and she, she, as the library, is in dire need of, of upgrades, as, as Ms. Single said. Uh, LED lighting. Oh, yes. And, and uh, we're having issues with the maintenance guys are staying pretty good trying to keep the lighting working. Uh, but the LED lighting, the heating and air conditioning system, all that is getting, uh, getting some age on it, as well as uh, need more square footage as we go forward. Yes. We've, also, we've had to replace um, three of the air conditioning units. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we got MMR money uh, this past year for one of them, which the state matched. I mean, we, should, we didn't have to dip into the splash for that. But, uh, yeah, the, I remember uh, Jason came one time and said it's hard to find the bulbs right. for the building. And recently we had the parking lot lights, two of them go out, and we have an electrician that comes to do that one. <laughs> they had to go to two Home Depots and an electric company to find the thing to put in the, the parking lot like so yeah it, it will all be it all be <coughs> and I will also say we're going to have um, we have a library board uh, they'll probably be writing letters to mm -hmm. our rep state representatives and all um, for a campaign like that getting to Am I reading this? Uh, you've already collected over the past six years. It looks like it's going to be around 1.6 million. That's, that's, how much that's the projection. That's the projection. I think we made that projection a couple of years ago, and the collections have actually gone up the past couple of years. So hopefully, it'll be a little bit more than that. And we've mm -hmm. um, we've given you 100,000 for the architectural drawing yes. so far. 
and then I think 33 on the roof. Yeah. The state will match. Uh, we were looking at 2 million, and the state would match 2 million. And in the past, if we got the splash money, the state would let us go ahead and start renovating because the splash money would come in. Well, they changed the rules 2015 or 16, and the state said, well, you have to have at least 90-something, 90 93% of the money up front first now. So, that changed. <clears throat> We've already got a tentative floor plan that's pretty well laid out to this point right here. Now, like Ms. Simmons said, it'll probably wind up being changed yeah, a little changed. bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was changed. I think you had a meeting with myself, Rick Jaspers, mm -hmm. uh, Representative Rick Jaspers, one or two more when you brought the original yes. plans in. Yes, yes that's And uh, it, was, it was tweaked in a little bit different than this, but it's really, really good layout. And I assume that Rick is helping you with this, Rick Jaspers. I mean, do you feel positive? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah I hope so. Good. Yeah, there's a, a library, um, there's a legislative day in February. They called it the hot dog day because um, the varsity provides hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you go down there and you talk to your good. <laughs> That's when we found a couple years ago that we had to have 90-some percent up front and change the rules on us. So worth going to that to find out what's happening. But I think it's, uh, we have a good possibility because we have most of the money. We're number three on the list. I'm very hopeful that they'll approve it. Would you know if the other two that are ahead of you have already got their money in place? Their local money's in place like we have here in Canada? Sure. Not but that's going to determine how you how you fall whether yeah. you run up the list or not. Also, too, there's a um, formula too. If it's a brand new like a headquarters, they go ahead of anybody on that list. Um, but we're just doing renovations. But I still think we have a good, good shot. But who knows? We we were up at number four or five a couple years ago. And we got bumped down, mm -hmm. and then now we're up back up to number three. Are you having any major issues with the building right now as it stands? No, no, just uh, roof fixed, got the heating and air conditioning working. Yeah. Other than the lighting yes. that we're having having issues with, uh, yeah. trying to keep it operational uh, without spending a whole lot of money, knowing that the remodeling will hopefully be coming soon. Yeah. Um, all right. That's good. Any other questions? Good luck. <laughs> 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 they had a uh, they had a good program the other night, and I want to thank you for that. It was good crowd, big program, and uh, turned out very well. Well, thank you, thank you. All right. Well, that's that's it. Unless you want another question, or y'all have any questions? I don't know. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Miss Emma. Have a good rest of the day. <laughs> you you too. too. You have a good holiday. You too. All right, that's still, we're in the department updates. Uh, the department heads are sitting here. Can y'all make it quick? And we'll turn this over to uh, uh, the insurance company. Is that too quick? Huh? You want to get done that quick? No, I'm going to for the ride here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Jones, sit back in the back. Recreation department. Uh, we are playing basketball. We uh, started basketball games on Monday night. Uh, we were playing basketball leading up to Christmas, and then uh, we'll play break for Christmas and for the New Year, and then we'll come back in January and finish up the season. Uh, so we'll be very busy as far as people coming in and out of the community center uh, for the duration of the December and January. Um, the dugout project is about 80 percent done we've got all the concrete poured um, for uh, build one uh, all we have left to do is put the uh, roofs on and put the metal chain link around to enclose it but uh, right now we've got people trying to take vacation before the end of the year so we're kind of running on a skeleton crew but uh, we have all the supplies and everything we need it's just getting the guys there and they'll knock that out in no time so that's just about done Ms. Denny, you or Mr. Barnes got any questions or observations? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Nicholson, EMA? EMA, the final few pieces that wasn't with the furniture with the new equipment. The Rice, so Ronnie and Jason will be installing that this week. The three new brine distribution, 
distributors therein. Jimmy and Jerry are installing that at the road department now so we can prep everything. All the brines have been made for the in case an emergency arises in the near future. We have it already made and sitting there. The brines have been delivered to Big Canoe. Their tank's full. That's it for EMA. Give us a, give us a uh, uh, status on the projects, such as um, the road department. Special the projects. The LMIG roads for next year have been sent to the state to approve. And <coughs> the LMIGs for this year, that project's been closed out. We're fixing it as soon as they finish doing the striping. We'll close out that LMIG project. I'm waiting on Parker was here last weekend painting some of the roads, the striping and all. So when he finishes and presents Faye with the invoice, then I can close out that project. As we go forward uh, with Parker in the near future, uh, the commissioner, uh, Charlie Parrish up in Gilmer County, would like to discuss that with you for the, for the striping that we might partner together uh, with the striping between Pickens and Gilmer County. Uh, when the Parker comes in here to do striping, if they <coughs> give us any kind of a break to work the two counties together at one time, uh, you think that would be possible to pull something like that off? I would think you could do that because we, with the city, we try to schedule them at the same time. But that will change because the city, all their L mix stuff from here on out will be for sidewalks and things like that. They got I'm, their roads paid. <clears throat> I'm just trying to think out of the box a little bit, trying to get if we can partner together. When they come over here to set up, they can do both counties at once. It's much easier. We get a better rate that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, the building at the road department, you got any dates on that one? Matt said that the building had been ordered. He wants to start starting on the concrete and those things the first week of January, weather permitting. Uh, and maybe we can give them a better better update on the on the new self recycling building as we go forward and yes. get some timelines on that <clears throat> as we go. Anything else you want to? Okay, questions with him. Yeah. What did you hear about the weather for next week? Do we need to bring that up now, or you want to wait? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a week away, but right now the European model is showing for all of North Georgia, beginning Wednesday night, up to an inch and a half of ice. So we we'll possible. possible, possible, possible. We'll know more about yeah, we'll it. Monday. On. <laughs> about Monday. <laughs> uh, about Monday's in. If it's still forecast that way, we'll move forward. But we have urged Jimmy and Jerry to really get those brown machines ready to go. Okay. Which they should. Tomorrow's supposed to rain. They'll be inside working so they can get that knocked out. Alright. Let's go ahead here. Mr. Tasha, Animal Control. Yes. Um, the quarantine doors have all been installed and they all look good. Um, the free adoption event that we held in November was a huge success. We adopted um, seven dogs and four cats and three owner reclaims can pick up their animals. Um, microchipping is going very well. We've um, had a lot of success with that. We are planning on having another free adoption event along with a microchip clinic in December, probably either the 14th or the 21st of December. We're going to nail down one of those dates. Um, animal control calls have been lower in the last few months than normal, so that's good. Um, and we currently have 25 cats and we are down to 12 dogs. So everything's running smoothly over there. Um, like I said, really just the, the free adoption events are huge. Um, we do so charge $20 for the microchips when we have those free adoption events, but we've already had people calling, um, several people this week calling interested in another free adoption event. Okay. So we plan on having another one of those probably in the next week or two. And you're still trying to abide by that little ordinance where we got we would do work sessions and, and regular county meetings? in regard to vendors that want to come in and propose their goods that they have to take dogs and cats with them when they leave. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think everybody in the room today should come over to the animal shelter and adopt a cat and a dog. <laughs> come on over here. Okay. <laughs> Alright, anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Dobbs, how are you uh, coming back to your apartment back there? Uh, people are buying and selling property at a brisk pace. Uh, property transfers are coming through on a regular basis. Uh, 
surveyors are extremely busy still. We've got more new mapping projects than you can shake a stick at. Uh, and just good interaction with the public. The website's working good for information. Uh, things are going good, just busy, busy, and people are being attracted to Pickens County as we're noticing. And Mary, don't play that thing about the ice until we go to the store and get our milk, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and bread. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Ms. Pauline, give me a resource. We've been working on, the, of course, the insurance, open enrollment, health insurance, and we had that in the end of November and it closed out on the 3rd of December. And we're changing the signal and they, we're trying to get them all the everything ironed out this summer just to make sure everything is, you know, put as close as it can be. And I think we've pretty much got that done. And an update on the e uh, there were four people who did accept the e and retired in November. We've still got three more who have turned in their election forms, hadn't actually got their notice of retirement yet, but we plan on they plan on doing that. So out of the nine that are qualified, we're going to have seven that are actually going to retire? That's what it looks like, yes. All right. This point. We still have to the 16th for the other two that was offered, which, you know, to turn in anything. And um, December service awards, uh, the fire department, there's going to be three 10-year awards. And then the recreation department, there's going to be one 20-year award. All right. Are you getting any... Um, good applications on the planning and development position? We, we've actually got a total, including the ones that are from within, of about 14. Mm -hmm. And I was actually talked to Ethan Calhoun with the North Georgia Regional Development um, this morning, and we went through some of them. I, I plan on getting out some information probably early next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any further questions for that? And you got uh, no, no sir i'm right. just observing all right uh before we get to that record uh mr nixon you want to give us an update on the fire stations i know the tape fire station is pretty well Tate fire station is pretty well complete we'll be moving in in january furniture's on order those type things we got the gas hooked up last week that was a challenge but that's all been taken care of ETC's done their thing. We're just fixing to wind it all down. So we're still looking, I think, what, uh, January the 3rd, I think. I think that's a, that's our goal, <coughs> providing the weather cooperates. Yeah. Just as soon as the holidays are over, move it in. All right. Any questions on anything? Yeah. So we turn it over to the uh, property and liability insurance proposal. Mr. Denson, I'm going to turn the floor over to you, sir. Thank you. It is good to have you all here, and I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. We appreciate you letting us come. Uh, if you have to turn off the camera, I'm on witness protection program. <laughs> um, Robert said I had five minutes. I'm I'm kind of I can stretch it to seven. I'm kind of shy, so I, I'll uh, <laughs> try to cut it down as much as I can. You're fine. Ms. Fay has been extremely helpful in helping us uh, develop some information to prepare a proposal for you. This proposal is a unfortunately a work in pro progress because we looked at your insurance as a uh, we, we don't really know what all you have we don't know what you don't have but we've presented this in a manner that tells you what we can do and, uh, we, Norton Insurance, Norton Mountain Insurance Agency, Denson Insurance uh, and Gallagher work together in representing a lot of different public sectors. They are professionals in the public sector business. Uh, they handle over 400 public entities in the state of Georgia. Uh, some of the items we deal with, uh, counties we deal with, Gwinnett, Cobb, Versailles, Cherokee, Hall, Newton. Uh, we do municipalities, which you all don't really care about, but we do Holly Springs. Um, and the public school system as well. So all that they do is public entity work. I've been here 41 years in the business. Uh, I know that we've seen a lot of changes in what your insurance program should be. We're not trying to tell you that 
you're incorrect now. You've got good representation, you've had a good program, and you've had a lot of good coverage. We try to approach this in a way that protects you from what we see as your newest exciting uh, emerging exposures. Uh, social justice, social activism, the Me Too movement, sexual harassment, abuse, molestation, law enforcement, liability, and wrongful convictions, uh, terrorism, active shooting situations. You don't ever think we'd talk about that in Pickens County, but we will have to. Uh, Off-duty liabilities for policemen, uh, firemen, and the one that we're going to see, and this is an example that, that uh, we're going to talk about, ransomware, cyber crimes. Cyber, I don't know how encompassing your cyber program is. It better get in, uh, very encompassing. Uh, average claims uh, in the state of Georgia, uh, run about $178 per file when there is a cyber breach. Uh, he's going to talk about that a little more in depth, but the situation of uh, ransomware, uh, City of Holly Springs got hit with that and uh, to the tune of about uh, $100,000. Correct. And they had insurance for it. The city of Jackson County, Jackson Georgia. County got hit for $400,000 cyberware and had no coverage. That comes out of tax dollars. <coughs> Our biggest worry is not that we come in with a better price but to make sure that we, if we present something to you, that it's something that when I walk down the street, I don't have to worry about somebody saying, why didn't you think about that? Quick question. Yes, do sir. we have, do we get any kind of a discount knowing that we have took preparations approximately four years ago for this type of incident? Do we get any, any help? Through the insurance companies through that discount? That comes from what I'm about to talk about next, okay. which is <clears throat> you you've had an insurance program that marches along, and I'm not I'm not saying anything wrong with whatsoever, but it marches along coverage to coverage to coverage. Risk management is what we offer. We come in and say, if you will let a, let our <clears throat> personnel talk with you concerning how to avoid these situations how to make sure that you've done everything that you can and then at that point insurance will take over. That's where you get your discount. You proactively risk manage yourselves into a lower premium. Now insurance is going up every year. There's nothing anyone can do about that. When you're taking your, when we take your program to an insurance company and tell them that Gallagher has taken and risk managed you down to a point where you have the least possible exposure in automobile uh, liability. You have the least possible exposure in cyber. You have the least possible exposure in, in uh, uh, social justice, social activism. Each of these items are something that the department heads will get to deal with personnel who will come in and, and not in a time taking manner will work with them in developing a, uh, a program that insurance companies look at you and say, I, you've done what you had to do, we're lowering your premiums. We're not raising your premiums as much. You can't stand as a county to continue to get beat to death with a price increase every time the insurance industry decides to do that. You've got to proactively set up a risk management program done by a carrier that will come in and not demand but work with. Uh, these people got too much to do anyway. They don't have time to sit around and let three insurance people tell them you need to uh, fill out this form and do this form. But to come in and actually start a program where everybody is working toward a reduction next year in either increase or a reduction in pure price. There are some items that you may have that you don't need. There, but you, you need someone that's actually working with large counties that see those exposures. We're at a different level. We're at a different uh, we're at a different exposure level, but they have the exact same exposures. You've got everything that, that Cherokee County has. We're just smaller. And we're better, but we are smaller. I had to throw that in because we are better. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, again I, I, I can go on and on and, and talk about we do this for your automobile. Automobile insurance is X, and you've got a liability limit. 
we don't know if you have an umbrella. We don't know have a lot of a lot of the items that you do currently have. My my quest today is to ask you to. We've got a final premium at the at the back door. The last item says this is how much an insurance program that we would feel proud to institute. I would feel okay walking down the street knowing that you've got this insurance coverage, but we don't know if that's exactly what, uh, if that's addressing the coverages that you have. You may have something that, that's been left off that we have. We don't feel we left off anything. These are the coverages that you should have as a county. Miss Faye has a million hats to wear, and being an insurance expert, she's really good at it, but it's also difficult to see everything that goes on. Uh, having help from a professional group would be extremely important, it's, uh, and, and we would like to see if you look at these, this proposal, are these numbers, the, the numbers are irrelevant, based on the fact that you may be looking at something that uh, your cyber may be totally off your uh, uh, our municipal workforce protection plan is something that nobody else has that comes from Gallagher alone so I'm going to turn this over to again without before questions turn this over to Matt just for a minute let him hit you with uh, specifics of the plan what we do for other counties what we do for cities and what we do for school systems and uh, let you see why uh, we think that this, we know that this program is excellent. We hope that it's a competitive program and that you understand the, uh, the necessity of all the aspects of it, why you have to protect the taxpayers for those things. So. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, my name is Matt Simmons uh, with Gallagher's Public Sector. Uh, Mike did a great job giving a real good overview uh, of what we're doing here. As he mentioned, that we work with <coughs> public sector, public counties throughout the state of Georgia, Fall County, Gwinnett County, Cobb County, Newton County, Forsyth County. Um, we take that proactive risk management approach, everything that Mike was talking about, and not coming in saying, hey, if you don't do this, we're going to raise all your rates. Because developing your own risk management program can be a huge undertaking. But when you have a partner that comes in with a, with a template for you, with best practices that are happening down in Cherokee, that are happening at Foresight and all, and being able to show you here are some of the steps you can take, it makes it, it it gives you a pathway forward so that everybody can have their own personal stake in the cult in the safety culture of the county. And the big key to proactive risk management is stemming the loss-driven increases every year because we can't account for what the market's going to do because the market hardens, the market softens. Auto's going up right now, property's pretty stable. Um, but <clears throat> what you can do is you can take proactive control of <coughs> the things that are impacting from a loss standpoint. Um, some of the things that we do, um, for a brief example I have on page seven, a, risk, uh, a sample risk management plan. We do loss analysis and benchmarking to see where are the losses coming from, which departments are that are driving your losses, and how does that stack up against a Hall County or a Newton County? Um, and what kind of, you know, understand, you know, if it's not a thing, talk about driver training, driver selection. What kind of things can we put in place for you to help assist with that and drive down uh, and start to get a handle on those claims so that again we can stem the loss driven increases because that's really the key and it's about taking control of your destiny rather than a weight of your fate. Um, do you guys have any, is there any questions about that? I don't want to belabor a lot of stuff but you know questions about risk management you know I don't know if you guys are doing anything today if the county's doing anything today from a risk management standpoint or a proactive perspective is there anything that is happening currently? I know there's a plan with, on the workers' comp, but as far as mm -hmm. um, property and liability, I don't think so. Well, that's great, because work comp, obviously, you, we're talking about our employees, and it is always good we have a good HR department talking about safety and training, things like that. But, um, and, that's, and that's one side of it, but once you get to the auto, you think, yeah, people think, oh, well, you're going to have accidents. It's going to happen. Well, there are things that you can do from a, uh, 
from a training standpoint to help with that. Um, anything, any other questions on that? I, I have a question probably for the commission chair. Are we talking about the uh, sheriff's vehicles in this conversation? Or yes. is this strictly? Yes. Yeah, and some of be all yeah. sheriff and fire. Everything. All counting, uh, all counting. Okay. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of the risk management side of things and kind of a real high level of coming in and developing even a risk committee that, you know, we, we would meet together two, three times a year maybe um, and talk about things that are going on, talk about some of these emerging exposures, talk about how we're going to take care of the superstorms Mike talked about. I do have a question. Yes, I know in personal lines uh, we can do discounts for drivers' training, etc. Does that apply as well to commercial that they can get the drivers' training certificates and get discounts for that, or is that totally so different? More so, what we do. I understand we're talking about personal lines, but more so in the commercial market, um, what we talk about is it's more that full scope of what you're looking at because right now I can tell you for example your auto is being driven up a lot because in like 15 or 6 15 16 policy I believe you had uh, there's a it was a large claim year for auto so and it's still required mandated to be used on the experience rating and so that's driving a lot of stuff because you have some of those but as we get better and those years come off once when you see a risk management program in place the carriers take note of it. So it's not as much of the credits as with the certificates, but... How many years does the, the one you're talking about, how many years do y'all look at? Does it go back five years or... So, uh, let me actually, I've got that right here. Um, it varies a little bit uh, carrier by carrier, but um, for example, right now, what they're taking into account from an auto is going back to the 2016 policy year. So it's roughly around three to four years of what's going back, and next year that should drop off of mandatory experience rating. Um, this should drop off mandatory uh, experience rating on that. Um, to answer your question, Becky, about excuse me, uh, about the individual situations, that does not earn a credit. The fact that they've had the driver safety and the fact that you've dri uh, you've taken each of those departments and lowered the losses on that. That's what they're looking at overall, and also our explanation to the carrier for renewal of what you're doing to make a safer driving environment. To, you, you're taking those persons, hiring them that are in the programs, hiring them that have the classes, requiring that they take the classes, things like that. That's what's going to drive your rate later. It's not giving you a discount per se, but it takes you a, into a different realm. The company says, all right, they've done everything they can do to make themselves safer for us and save us money. Their bottom line is, is what do they make off your account? You earn that situation by, by doing all of these proactive situations that come together to where you, you present them as, look, Pickens County has done this, 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 and this. All right, we've got some losses here, but these are starting to, starting to fall off a little bit. So that's how the pricing is driven. It's not on a per driver or per, per vehicle basis. It's based on that overall experience. Sense. Mm -hmm. it, absolutely right and perfect because part of our job is to tell a story to the underwriters, to tell, uh, tell a story of Pickens County. And, you know, here's a prime example. Let's say that there were a lot of uh, sheriff's department uh, collisions. Um, and it turned out that there was some high speed chasing. Not saying that there is, but we've now put a policy in place that high speed chase is not acceptable uh, in Pickens County. Um, there, <clears throat> that's a mitigation tactic, it's a risk management approach that's going to reduce the frequency of those claims. <clears throat> and so you look at things like that. And so as time goes on, what we're talking about is not what is your 2020 renewal look like. No. What we're talking about is what does the next three to five years of Dickens County look like. And that's what we're, that's what we recommend and the approach that we take because Pickens County is growing and it's going to be growing because people are going to continue to move out of the metro area, start coming up to Jasper and the surrounding areas. And we want to look at, we want to be ready for that. <coughs> How does next year look? Um, any other questions about the risk management and that, and that approach that we're taking? Um, I'll give you a couple of quick hits on the proposal. 
most of the stuff is very standard. Your general liability, property, a lot of stuff is very standard. So I'm going to hit a couple of highlights of things that we do from our recommended structure. Um, and things that I generally see are differences in what we've done with other counties, with other uh, local governments. Um, like I said, not knowing what you have today. Um, part of what our recommendations are, you know, we have flood and earthquake coverage. A lot of times we see that either limited or non-existent in, uh, in current policies. It's an important thing um, to make sure that, uh, that we have proper coverage on. Um, one thing that we've done here is we've actually bundled the fire with the rest of uh, the policy. Because currently there are two separate policies, of, a policy for the fire department and a policy for the county. So from an auto standpoint and a property standpoint, we have aggregated all those numbers into one. The idea being that you bundle and save. Not only that, but you reduce some of the administrative work that, okay, it was, an, it was a fire claim, I got to call this adjuster or this under, or this insurance company. And then, oh, well, it was, you know, it's a county vehicle, so I got to call these guys, or it's here, it's there. Are there different terms? It simplifies and streamlines everything uh, so you can move forward uh, uh, better. Um, everything going down the list is, is very standard. One thing that we do is we always in, uh, recommend uh, umbrella for liability. I don't know if there is one today, um, but we always have an umbrella on liability excluding auto because state tort caps cover you after your million dollars, so you don't need umbrella over your auto liability. If you go to the second page, <coughs> um, a lot of times we see low crime limits. The benchmark, the standard, is, is a half million dollars for a county the size of Pickens. Um, it's our recommendation. Um, the next four items are really the big things that uh, Gallagher clients have, Norton and Gallagher clients have, but we see a lot of the entities uh, do not have, so the assumption being uh, that you may be missing some of these things. Full terrorism coverage. Um, uh, most people purchase TRIA coverage, which is the Terrorism, Terrorism Risk Insurance Act of 2002. When it comes to your property, we recommend full terrorism coverage, and there's a difference between the two because in 17 years in existence of TRIA, it's never paid a claim, ever, because it requires government certification of, a, of an act of terrorism. So Emanuel Church, uh, Parkland, Fort Hood, San Bernardino, none of these were considered acts of terrorism based by the government. And so there's no TRIA coverage provided there. Ter broad form terrorism coverage merely requires ideological motivation. So somebody comes up and shoots up the courthouse. That's where terrorism comes into play. You know, the shooting at the Walmart in El Paso earlier this year, they were targeting a certain sector of people. That manifesto triggers the te triggers terrorism coverage, but it's not something that's covered as a certified act of terrorism. So TRIA coverage doesn't pay. In 17 years, it's never paid a dime, including in Boston. That coverage is never paid on anything on property. We still recommend it on your liability because it's dirt cheap on the liability. But we want to make sure that you're pr properly protected in Pickens County. Um, cyber liability, you may have cyber Go back. Go cyber. back. If, if it hadn't paid in 18 years, what triggered it? A certified act of terrorism, a government certification. The United States government must certify terrorism for it to happen. And I am, the comment that I make is, I don't see that they'll do it because if you certify terrorism, you're losing the war on terrorism. And they have, never, they have not certified it since 9-11. This was passed in 2002. Tree was passed in 2002. It, is, it, it takes a, an act of the United States government, the State Department, the President, have to certify terrorism. So if we get invaded by the Cayman Islands and they and they blow up the courthouse and, and somewhere in Alabama, is that going to be that coverage under our policy? You get, do not let them go. You, well, well, let's put it clear. You have coverage here. You might have coverage there. And that's the key. That's the key. You definitely have coverage here. If somebody comes in and shoots up your courthouse because they're going, they're they hate the they hate the sheriff's office. They shoot the sheriff's office. Or they're targeting somebody. Well, I guess, I guess, I guess, my point is, if if they haven't paid in 17, 18 years, why pay the coverage? 
because you're, exactly. you're you're required to pay the coverage. The coverage is very the premium is very small, but it adds up when you never pay a claim. So the government's getting that. The federal government. The key, well, and, and so that's exactly why I recommend against buying TRIA on your property, but buying full terrorism coverage instead. It's a separate policy. The proposal comes with TRIA coverage uh, with, a, with, a, with a surcharge for Terrorism Risk and Service Act. Um, it comes with a surcharge for that. And so what our recommendation is, and we recommend this to everybody, is that you decline the coverage and you purchase full terrorism coverage through a market that, that writes it for non-certified acts. And that's where ideological motivation is really your trigger. So the Emanuel Church shooting, when he was targeting African Americans, when Dylan was targeting African Americans, that is under, under the policy that we recommend to all of our clients, that act is covered as terrorism. <coughs> it just doesn't have to be a certified act of terrorism. And this, this policy includes TRIA also. It's a part of it. So you have that as well. So we recommend buy the real coverage because the chance, the likelihood, and all due respect to Pickens County, the likelihood of something being certified, Pickens County wasn't certified in, at the Boston bombing. It's, it's, the government's not, may or may not do it. And so we recommend confirm that you have coverage rather than waiting to see if somebody says that you have coverage. And that's really what it boils down to. And so that's one of the big differences that we promote with our with our approach to the public sector. Um, any other questions on the terrorism? No. Um, cyber, you may have cyber today. Uh, Mike brought up uh, two of our great examples. Holly Springs, they had a, they had a cyber attack, and they wouldn't even a ransomware. It just cost a total of hundred thousand dollars from forensics, accounting, IT, everything to bring them back up and running. They had coverage. They had coverage. They were a client been a client of ours for twelve years. They had, they had coverage for it. Jackson County, Georgia, had cyber liability coverage, didn't have extortion. So it cost $460,000 to pay that ransom to get their data back. We make sure that we affirm all of that coverage because, and, we, and there's benchmarking data in the back of this that we, that we utilize to say how much does Pickens County need? And we take a look at that. Um, our municipal, municipal workforce protection plan, this is something that Gallagher created. Um, we created after the uh, Dallas uh, shootings of officers, targeting officers. It's a 24-hour accidental death, on duty, off duty, business or pleasure uh, coverage for uh, public safety. I have it currently rated up for your police department. Um, I can redo it to include uh, fire because it's police, fire, and emergency medical um, can receive this kind of coverage. So that uh, if they, you know, a lot of officers have secondary employment, uh, but there's no coverage, there's no workers' comp coverage provided to it. So it starts to fill a gap there. Um, it starts to provide coverage. It's also a benefit to your office, to your public safety, for being public safety, for putting their lives on the line on a daily basis. So that if they're driving home uh, from uh, Pickens County football game, or come back from a Braves game, and they get into an accident on 75 or on 575, and they lose an arm, lose a leg, God forbid, uh, die. Uh, there's coverage provided to them off duty. We had, um, Forsyth County had a sheriff's deputy go to training early this year and have a heart attack and pass. The work comp coverage didn't cover it. For, and, and based on everything that went down, there was a gap there. And it boils down to when are you on duty, off duty. And we all know that, especially with police, the color of law, really is when you, you know, you see a criminal act being done, you're on duty. And it's really kind of a one to three percent scenario of things that are outside of scope of duty, and if something happens, if it's a catastrophic event, there's coverage provided to them. And it's for, our, for your fire, it can be for your fire as well, so that's something that, well, I had the numbers on police, so I didn't, on um, sheriff's office, so I, but I didn't have the number on, uh, numbers on fire, so we can add that in if you'd like to see that. Um, and the last piece is our risk management services that we that we already talked about. Like we said, putting together a three to five year plan for Pickens County as you continue to grow, as you continue to uh, evolve, um, being able to move with you and stem those loss driven increases, but really take control of your destiny rather than away with it. Any questions about? Yeah, I know I threw a lot of stuff out there. 
Uh, I got one, uh, just a quick one here on property and casualty proposal on page eight. Sir, sure. you got that at the bottom. You got retro seven one of yours says public officials liability. Uh, retro date seven one ninety six. Uh, what? Explain that. So it's uh, it's a claims made form, and we, this get really into insurance jargon. But um, claims made, uh, there's a you have claims made, and you have occurrence forms when it comes to uh, uh, professional uh, liability. So your uh, your law enforcement is on an occurrence form. Your public officials and employment practices on claims made, which is very standard. Mm -hmm. um, what that means is that they are providing coverage retroactive back to when it started because when you move from carrier to carrier on a claims made form you need to have retroactive coverage so that if um, a pending lawsuit could if, 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 yeah a lawsuit from from 1997 comes up mm -hmm. but whereas on your law enforcement even if you move carriers the coverage that was in place during the policy year will pay that forever so that if you have a law enforcement claim five years later uh, under one beacon today that will pay out uh, five years from now, whereas you would need to have the retro coverage. And that's what that means. Okay. It's okay. just saying that you, we're continuing your coverage. You don't have to buy a tail that yes. way. We, we go retro back to the date. If you have a fire today, whoever's on, it's on that fire claim. If you have a liability situation going back from 19 or from 2004, all right, you don't want to have to go back to that carrier. So it's a, you know, it's a claim, when is the claim made? Okay, and that, another that quick question, another quick question for both of y'all uh, before we go forward. Um, attorney coverage, the, uh, we've talked to many insurance companies over the years under liability, um, whomever the sheriff's department, uh, workforce, I mean our road department, they get sued. Do y'all first the attorney do we have, do the county commissioners have a uh, input into who represents those clients as we go forward, or are y'all going to step in? And the insurance it? company will provide uh, counsel, and we can you can add counsel uh, with their discretion. You can add counsel to using a local attorney or someone that you've used, someone he recommends. So you have that authority. You don't have authority. You have the right to add that. Who pays for uh, that? The uh, insurance company. So, you, so, so if we come in and recommend an attorney, or would like the insurance company to look at it, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to recommend a, an attorney to handle it initially. It will be assigned by the insurance carrier, and then you can have that adjoined. And if, if that is adjoined, then the insurance company will that that will be under the covered insurance cost. Well, and the other thing, the other thing too, that is, as a part of risk man, uh, the advanced risk management services, I would suggest that if if you were to select to go with Denson uh, Insurance and Gallagher, I would suggest that we have that conversation with the carrier, because uh, before we get to that point, and talk about who are their approved attorneys, who are, who do you have, because sometimes there are times where they will just, they'll evaluate the people that you prefer, so that. Um, they may add them to the uh, to an approved vendor list. Well, we've had these conversations yeah. in the past, yeah, so I'm right. just bringing yeah. it up to make sure they so you do that clear. beforehand. Mm -hmm. You, you uh, do a preemptive strike on that. You tell the insurance carrier, here's someone that, that we, we use for counsel or our counsel recommends. Then you get it decided. You know beforehand if you have a claim that you will be able to join that attorney or not. Or if, if not, then that's, you know, that's a, you work on it initially. But, they are going to provide counsel, and you can you can work a deal with them if they allow the current or allow someone that's recommended to come in. Okay. That's the, that's a decision made by the insurance carrier. It's not s stated in the uh, policy form. All right. Cause normally, as you well know, yes. Mike, being from up in here, the local attorneys right. know the history behind some that's of these claims that come up, question. and yeah. that's something that can be easily worked out. They don't necessarily have to bring a firm. <coughs> unless they have some of, uh, affiliation with them. So you, you do that prior to the, uh, once the policy is set up, then that's one of the first things that you do, is go to their legal department and say, all right, who are we gonna use? If something comes up in Pickens County, we want some, someone there with, with the local flavor. Okay. Uh, or, or someone that local flavor. I, just, I would just like the, the commissioners to have that option 
uh, as we go forward. So I'm just going to put everything out front. It's, it's, a, it's a decision that you can have input into, and once that deal is struck, if it can be struck, then you don't decide that you've already got counsel in place if there is something. Well, let me ask you this. If, if, if the insurance company, if we have a lawsuit or whatever, the insurance company ha furnishes their own attorney, they make a decision whether out-of-court settlement or whatever, they are not, how can I say this, would they have the authority to go ahead and settle without, without the input of the commissioners <coughs> that are paying the bill? They can yeah. settle without your authority. However, you do put yourself in jeopardy uh, if they have if they have a, a, a deal cut and they're going to make a settlement and you say no we won't do that they have the at that point you put yourself in jeopardy of I understand that point I just want to be sure that as we go forward if we go with new another insurance company as we go forward that if a settlement is done or a settlement is discussed right. these individuals that are sitting in these chairs right here need to be notified and brought into the equation without question okay that's the point that I'm getting to right now what I was going to finish up with is that because I know we're, we're over our time oh you're fine, um, you're fine. Gallagher is the company that makes your job easier and your job uh, and the, and the processes of developing a risk management program happen. Denson Insurance Agency, Chris Kemp and myself, are the local representation. You deal with the local office. This is not a situation of, of a, uh, uh, a national carrier or something that, that where you, you have a question concerning a legal issue, you don't have to call New York, you don't have to do this. We are the local representation. We do the auto changes. We do the, uh, the the certificates. We do anything as far as finding out information. So we offer the, the local um, representation with the ability to get to a company that offers the assets that they do. So that's uh, that's in our in our pricing situation. It's something that you can't discuss. But uh, we are here. And we do. Uh, intend to be here for a long time. So we appreciate your time very, very much. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, I have one, Please. of course. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I heard you say a couple of times like that you didn't have maybe all of the information. So is this price firm or is no. it just... This, this pricing is a recommendation of what we write for other Counties. This is a representation of taking your automobiles and, and simplifying that, that issue all into one policy into taking your liabilities and bringing everything into one envelope. Mm -hmm. That's a representation of what we recommend. Now, we have the ability to go back because we represent so many different entities. The insurance companies listen to Gallagher about pricing. We have the ability to go back and look at certain things that you may say, I don't want to do this. We recommend that you do because if you said there's no issues, write what protects us, and that's my word, write what protects us, that's what we would do. If, uh, if you look at it and come back and say the terrorism situation on the flood situation on this or that, we, we don't. Cyber, I, I can't let you not do that if I, I just... You can't do that. But on, on certain issues, there are things that can be adjusted. There are also limits that you may carry that are a little bit different. We've shown you what what you need to carry. There, You may have something different. and want to look at a different pricing scheme. But the only issue that I have there is you can't do less than you got to have, you know, to me to feel good. That was my other question is, um, is this apples to apples with the other, or is it more what no, you recommend? This is what we recommend. Okay. Faye has an issue that she has to protect your integrity from a from a uh, uh, from a quoting standpoint. She's not going to give someone a, a, it's her job not to give someone too much information that allows us to come in. We're not here to to outdo whatever someone else. And and a lot of times you get a pricing and come in and when certain counties or cities are looking at pricing issues, you come in five thousand dollars under them and. And there you go. That's not what we're about. We're, we're offering a program, uh, and the program can be can be formed to be exactly what you need. 
but it's not exactly what you have now. We don't we don't think we don't know, but that was that was inappropriate for us to ask her. <coughs> to, uh, so. Thank you. Appreciate it. Y'all did a good job. Any questions? Good job, Mike. It's the longest five minutes. Uh, learn something. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, I, like I said, I'm a little shy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. well, ladies and gentlemen, is there, uh, anybody here got any, any questions in regards to what what we got going on right now? Mike, you, you, you or Chris, or anybody got any questions for us? Not after making a proposal and wanting you to accept it in a, in a favorable fashion. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as I close that, that even a good, as soon as I close that door, I'll let you know. Oh, uh, well, well, baby, thank you so much for letting us come. This is a this is a format that you don't see in a lot of situations where you're able to just talk. A lot of places they throw down the paper. Here you go. Here's your quote. Take it and leave it. Uh, you're looking at pure dollars there. You're not supposed. They are insurance professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a professional. She's really professional, <laughs> and you're a good guy. I just bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Turn it down. Oh God! Almost got out of it. Uh, uh, yeah. But that. Uh, <laughs> this was a good <laughs> format to be able to say what what you're trying to do. You're not. Uh, you're looking for bottom dollars, but, but yeah, we're looking for an insurance good coverage and bottom that dollars. lets you get to a, your best bottom dollar that you can, mm -hmm. and that's through a little bit of work, a lot of work on their part, a little bit of work on your part, a lot of work on their part. So that's what we're offering. Thank you. No, well, thank you. Uh, Faye, do you got any questions for the group? Mr. Landon? She'll have some up, I bet you. Yeah, she'll have some more. We will probably, we'll probably we'll probably discussing some more as we go forward. We're available to if you want to look at adjustments. Very easy. You said this does include fire. Yes. Uh, and so that's one of those things that if we want to, if if you if you want to pull out the fire, we can and we can see what that will look like. But like I said, that's everything you get. Generally, it's a better process to put it all together. Okay. The only other coverage that, that we have that I can think of is for the airport. We have a special aviation mm -hmm. policy. That's not included here, right? Uh, no, but, I, but that can be easily so taken, be easily done. If, you, if, yes. if, if Mike can gather the Most of the counties do have mm -hmm. uh, an aviation situation. Okay. Yes. We'll we can, uh, just a little bit, tidbit of information, mm -hmm. we can throw that in. Okay. All right. Um, any, further, any further questions? Just a couple quick announcements. Friday, tomorrow, just to give everybody a heads up, Pickens County High School Band is marching in the Gatlinburg Parade, Friday's Christmas Parade. We've also got to be back by Saturday morning because they're marching again in the Christmas Parade for downtown Jasper on Saturday. So just y'all just keep that in mind. Uh, good for them. And at this time, y'all have a safe holiday. We'll be in touch, and this meeting is now adjourned. Thank y'all.